still difficult to, you know, it still doesn't meet his standards of what he was done for, I guess. Well, what do you do that he doesn't like, or that he wants that you can't do? Well, very little on the, on the, uh, on the wants, he, but it comes up, he, he says, why wasn't I invited to the meeting in the White House on the crime program? Well, the reason was that invited the committee and the leadership, and he wasn't on that, that and uh, so that's accepted. And then he said, why haven't you briefed me on the civil rights bill? Well, he said, we will. But again, you know, you know, you start doing this, perhaps I'm getting bureaucratic, but you start doing this in terms of the members of the committee and the leadership and so forth. And you don't oh, no, no, that's what you're... He gets hurt. He feels hurt about it. Why haven't you done it with me? And, well, the reason is, that, uh, why haven't you done it with other 85 senators? Well, I'd say, number one, I haven't done it with the president yet, and I'm just trying to see what I can get through this goddamn committee. Yes, That's what I'd say. I'd say I'm trying to feel, as the leaders in the committee, what I can get through this committee. That's what I'm trying to do. And I haven't gone over this with the president. I haven't gone over with him yet. And uh, uh, we have our instructions that to take every committee and any committee that you're on, that bills come up to, that if you if you're in reachable position, why we call you. And I don't think he accepts. I don't observe that he accepts when he's invited. No, no. Uh, I think it runs the other way. I think it runs the, uh, his refusal. Yes, I think it. Uh, I'll give you a list sometime, and you can just say, and I would guess he's been invited 20 times. And he may have accepted three, mm. like the immigration bill in New York. He was mm. very much there. And mm. the other day, he was something here at the White House, uh, uh, the Vietnam bill mm. on military appropriations for Vietnam. Uh, the thing that he's got, and I don't want to, he doesn't understand this. Uh, my daddy used to say some people so damn crooked themselves, they think everybody else is. And some people so evil themselves or so manipulating themselves, they think everybody else is. Now, I'm not trying to build any political organization in this country. If I did, I'd be over to that Democratic National Committee and I'd have a hell of a hierarchy. All I've done is fire everybody over there. Just fire and move them all back because they're a bunch of has-beens that are just costing us a lot of money and so forth. When they come along and don't want us to advertise in these $15,000 things I never heard of till they've done it. And uh, then I've been trying to get them out of it ever since. And I seriously think the way we ought to do that is just send these people back the money. I told Henry Fowler to go up there and testify on behalf of the amendment. I don't want a corporation uh, uh, being shaken down while I'm president. I said, just tell Williams, by God, I'll call you and raise you. And he did. He, he testified for the amendment. Of course, we never got any credit for it. And I wanted it in my bill, uh, in my corrupt practices bill, or my legislation bill. And he, he jumped in there. But uh, I'm not trying to uh, uh, shove Humphrey or shove anybody uh, uh, out in front of Bobby. I have no objections to Bobby becoming president of this country. I just, by God, want to be a president myself. And I think it ill behooves the Kennedys, after all I've done for the Kennedys, to not reciprocate the treatment that I've given them. Everything they've ever asked, the father, the president, uh, Bobby, and Teddy, I've done except put Bobby on the ticket vice president. That's all. I pardoned Frank Boykin, and I sent Morris his name to the Senate, and I uh, uh, named you Attorney General, and I've done every damn thing they asked. And I went to New York, and every time he asked me, I went, and I campaigned, and I traveled from one end of that state to the other. I think if I just sent the word down the line, I thought Keating would make a hell of a lot better senator, and I would think he ought to knock his ass off. I think they'd beat him. I think so. Yeah. And I, I think he ought to have a little bit of gratitude. And I don't ask that. But he goes around and he stirs up all this trouble. Let me show you how cheap it is. Yesterday, the New York chairman, his man, came down here and spoke to the New York delegation and says that McNamara, who incidentally is the best friend Bobby's got in the cabinet, uh, maybe the exception to you, but I mean of the regular cabinet men that I deal with, mm -hmm. 
Always takes up one. Always says, count me in on his side. Record me as being in favor of Bobby. No equivocation, has to see it. Lumps in his throat or anything. But he goes up there and says, well, you way back to Myers Street, New York City, why don't all of us gang up here and vote against Johnson's bail until he makes peace with us? That's just pure goddamn blackmail. <laughs> and that, that ought to do that to the Democratic Party. And he and Joe Clark and some of these folks that are doing this, Joe Clark's predicting we'll lose 75 seats. We've done nothing except to acquiesce in every request he's made and every recommendation he's even made on United Nations, on pauses and everything else. But I can't pull out, and he says he doesn't want to pull out. But he does that, and I listened to Fulton Lewis tonight. He got 30 minutes here on what Joe Clark's saying, what this crook Clark Lipton's saying. And Fulton Lewis is saying, if Clark says that he's a great ADA liberal, he says we're going to lose 75, and all we've got to do is lose 77 in the Republic to be in charge. Therefore, everybody get your money together and do all you can, and let's pick up those extra two seats. They've already conceded 75, and that type of speech. Now, uh, Bobby oughtn't to be doing that, and Teddy oughtn't to be finding little ways of being away from me. Uh, I found ways to... Uh, uh, to embrace Jack Kennedy's program. Yeah. I, I leaned over every way a human could, and when I didn't agree, as I told him I didn't on the Bay of Pigs, I just stood up like a man and said he did the right thing, and I'm for him. I didn't run or shimmy or yeah. bellyache or cry. Uh, in the Cuban Missile Crisis, I thought that we ought to do some other things, and still thought so, but I didn't, I didn't differ. And uh, nobody knew it but he and I and the Secretary of State. But uh, I've got a clear conscience. I don't know why they do this. But both of them do it. Bobby much more so than Teddy. Bobby is behind this revolt up there on Vietnam. He's going around meeting with them and calling them together, and suggesting this and suggesting that. And, and when Russell put him on spot, which I didn't know, I called Russell and begged him not to. He said, well, I want to show these guys up. I want to make a record and rub their nose in it and then let the Legion and everybody understand it. Well, I, I just called and pled until I got him to, uh, and got McNamara to go see him and got him to agree not to offer his motion, just let Morris offer his motion. So that gave him a chance to get off. But he says, I don't want to beat guys like Nelson. Uh, 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 Dick Russell did. He said, they oughtn't to be here to begin with. And that's what they're going to do. Now, what these liberals are going to do, they're not going to hurt me one damn bit because I've already rec made my recommendations. I don't have to implement them, and my salary is going to be paid. But they're going to clean out a bunch of good liberal freshmen here by all this disarming me and this division. And it's not going to help them. And if they come along, the nomination not going to be worth a damn to them if they get it. And that's why I don't understand why they can't see that. Can I try that with Bobby when he gets back? I think you ought to. I, I, never, to. I don't say anything against him. I don't have any of my staff cussing him. Ain't nobody out trying to defeat him. I'm trying to help. Hell, I call him. I've called him five times sir, every time he's called me. He came in and recommended the first pause. I put it in effect purely and simply because he thought to do the job. I don't. I think he's immature on this thing. I think the slushers and the boys that advise him, I don't think they're right. But uh, uh, that's not the reason why I haven't tried it. Well, he never did either, Mr. President, and this is one thing I could tell him. Because, uh, uh, you, know, you know, Schlesinger was never, no. never, you know, Bobby yeah. would laugh at this when he was, was, uh, you know, really deciding. He's got an idea, though, that I'm an evil, uh, uh, Eastland that is trying to trip him up. Now, if I try and trip him up, why in the living hell would I tell everybody, including Wagner, to support him? And I just told Wagner he had no choice. I not only did that, I told Wisely he had no choice. He had to get in there and help him. Adlai Stevenson wanted to run and told me if I would just indicate to him he's all right, he'd do it. And I told him not to do it. And Adlai Stevenson never liked me to his dying grave. Well, the fellow did me that way, Nick. I'd never forget it as long as I live. I agree with you. I'd, I'd like to... And I, I have a, I have no obligation to Humphrey. I just happen to think that Humphrey was the best th 
thing that I could do as vice president of the whole thing, and I thought I had a right to do that. It was very clear that that was right, Mr. President. And uh, uh, I'd, like to just, I'd like to really have something of a free hand to take a crack at that, if I could do Yeah, that. well, not only a free hand, but you can, you, can, uh, you can deliver on this side of the fence. You can produce any comment that he hears. He jumped on Jack Blaney out here one night, just abused him something terribly. And Jack Blaney hadn't said a word against him. wasn't true at all. Somebody's gone tell him. He's got the role of Evanses and the little guys that want to suck up to him. Uh, and by going around telling him that everybody in the White House is gunning for him. Now, Joe Califano's his friend. He likes him. He admires him. Bill Moyers is his friend. I thought he murdered Bill Moyers the other day, but Bill didn't cry a word. He misrepresented him. He said he said something he didn't say. Uh, he misquoted him and everything else, and I thought he made himself look bad. I but I, I didn't say so, and I never, nobody at this White House hit him. Now, what happened was he made this damn fool speech at Schlesinger Rope, they tell me I don't know, and may be entirely wrong, but uh, uh, let me see who it was tonight. Somebody told me tonight that, uh, uh, Bill Moyers told me tonight that at a, book uh, meeting the other night uh, where Schlesinger's book was up that uh, his uh, his defense of the Vietnam thing was uh, the same words and same phrase the same logic in Bobby's speech on the negotiated Vietnam and that four different people told him I guess he was the post editorial board or something uh, that Schlesinger was bragging that he had written his speech well anyway whether he wrote it or whether he didn't he made this speech. Now, I came home, and I heard it on radio, and I heard it on television, and everybody was saying Bobby's advocating, uh, uh, negotiating with the Viet Cong. I didn't see his speech. I didn't read his speech. I just heard it all day. Well, it ran all day, all Saturday afternoon. He had his meeting Saturday morning, uh, his statement at the press conference. And I, I stretched out here in bed and took my nap, and I, I listened to the news on the hour and on the half hour. And I just rolled tumble in the bed, and I listened to it for about two hours Saturday afternoon. Saturday evening, I watched the TV news, and it was there until 11 o'clock, and it was the biggest play. Sunday morning, it was all the play in the country, except Fulbright endorses Kennedy's effort to negotiate Viet Cong. Then they come along and asked George Ball, who did not talk to me and never does talk to me and was hired by Kennedy and not by me, but to ask George Ball, what do you think about it? And he commented on it. Then Bobby comes in to Bill Moore and says, why does the administration cut loose and misinterpret my position? Now, all George Ball had done was let the press interpret it and see what everybody else had said, and he commented on that interpretation. And when you go back, it's pretty goddamn hard to, to accept any other interpretation. Uh, so uh, when they got into the squabble, I told Bill, I said, I saw him on television. And I heard him say that he thought that we ought to consider seriously uh, uh, doing business to Viet Cong. Uh, so he says, well, his written statement doesn't say that. And it's got to get an out place. I said, well, just call up the networks and get a copy, which we did. And his statement on the networks, Im uh, impromptu, is different from his prepared statement and goes much further than his prepared statement. So uh, Bill said, then how do we handle that? And I said, you just say if Senator Kennedy uh, doesn't mean that he wants to negotiate with him, then we are in agreement. And uh, don't get in a fight with him. So we didn't. We just, we played it cool. But he got a martyr complex. He thinks that this White House spends 24 hours a day trying to show him up. Now this White House is not trying to do anything. I'd like to show him good. I'd like to see him down here walking down the street with me. I'd like to go to Alexandria and make speeches with him. I'd like to hear him get up there and say, this administration is a damn good one, and mention Lyndon Johnson in his speeches. He doesn't. He goes all over Latin America just giving me hell by saying that he never would have gone in the Dominican Republic, and yet I got a brother, his brother's memo as late as October the 12th asking McNamara to tell him how many people he can put in Venezuela and uh, Haiti and uh, Dominican Republic in 12 hours and 24 hours because that we may have to move. And Russ said that he would have moved in naked by himself after the Bay of Pigs if he'd have thought the communists were taking over one of those countries. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and uh, anyway, the memo, let me, let me the memo see. is there, and all I got to do is release this memo. And just show that his own brother was considering doing it uh, three weeks before he died, before they had made the move. He 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 directed a memo to the Secretary of Defense 